The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, you are the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt. We give thanks that our resurrected Savior appears with the scars of this life on earth, but alive and triumphant forever. Give us faith to believe that our wounded world may also be brought to new life through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. 
When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. All right, kiddo, I think you're good. Thanks, Mom. In our home, when someone gets hurt, we put a Band-Aid on it. We prefer unicorn Band-Aids and the Incredible Hulk. It seems to speed up the healing process. What Band-Aids do you use in your home? Sometimes even after the Band-Aid falls off, for us usually in the bathtub, and there's no pain, there's still a mark. When that mark never goes away, we call it a scar. Most scars tell a story. I have a scar on my leg back from when I was a camp counselor. I fell one day coming out of the cabin and caught my foot on the screen door and I went down and man, did it hurt. I have scar to prove it. But when I look at the scar, I don't remember the hurt. I remember something else. See, my husband, he was on the other side of the field and he saw me fall. And when he saw me fall, he came running across the field and up the stairs to help. So when I look at that scar, I don't really remember the pain. What I remember is my husband running to help. What scars do you have? What stories do they come with? In today's gospel, Jesus shows up to show his disciples his scars. Do you remember the story of how Jesus got them? I know, it's a sad story about Jesus' death on the cross. But a really cool thing happens when Jesus tells the story of his scars. See, Jesus is there and he's alive. He's talking and breathing and telling his disciples to stop hiding in this room and to get out into the world to tell everybody that he's alive. And so the story is no longer just about Jesus's pain, but it's about new life and the fact that even death can't stop Jesus from loving you. See, that's the beautiful thing about scars, is they tell the story of the pain, but they can also tell the story of everything that happens after them. They can tell the story of the person who put on the Band-Aid, the one who ran to help, 
And they can tell the story of what God will do with our pain, about the new life and healing and hope that he'll make happen. And that's, that's a good story for the world to hear. That's a story that's worth telling. And you, you should be the one to share it. All right, my friends, it's time to pray. So I'm going to ask Zoe and Isaac to come and sit with me. You want to pray with me, guys? I'm going to sit here. Okay. Scooch over. Make room for Isaac. Oh, you're going to... All right, scooch over. Scooch over. Okay. All right. All right, you guys. Put your hands up in the air. Shake out the wiggles. Shake, 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 shake. Bring them together. Bring them down. Bring them together. Bring them down. Okay, repeat after me. Dear God. Dear God. We thank you. We thank you. For all the people. For all the people. You sent. You sent. You sent. To tell the story of Jesus. To tell the story of Jesus. Help us remember. Help us remember. What you can do. What you can do. With our pain. With our pain. With our pain. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. In our gospel reading for this morning, we read that the disciples are gathered together behind locked doors. The doors of the house where the disciples met were locked for fear. They're living behind locked doors because they are afraid. They are stricken with terror. They are paralyzed by panic. The disciples have come down with a full-blown case of the scares. The scares, not the scars. I'm going to talk about the scars a bit later. I first want to talk about the scares. So what's the most scared you've ever been? Was it the time your teacher walked you down to the principal's office? Was it that moment in the operating room right before the anesthesia puts you under? Was it the first time you walked up the front steps and into the front door of a funeral home? In my first parish, Robert told me about fighting the Japanese on an island in the Pacific. It was the nights that scared him the most. Because at night he could hear Japanese soldiers crawling around him and whispering to each other. And Robert carried the scars of those scares for the rest of his life. Just as we're going to carry the scars of this scare for many, many years to come. This COVID-19 virus has scared us. It has shaken our souls. It has sickened people we know. It has taken people we love. It has caused folks to lose their jobs. It has made us suspicious of our neighbors. And it has kept us apart. We can't gather together. We can't worship together. We can't stand for the seventh inning stretch and sing, take me out to the ball game together. This is not the way God designed us to be. God did not design us to be scarred by scares. God designed us to hope, to trust, to love, and to be together. So when it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, the disciples were gathered together in much the same way that we're gathered together. They were behind locked doors while we're behind homemade masks. But then the crucified and risen Jesus shows up and the first thing he says, the first words that Jesus speaks are not words of reproach or reproof, but words of comfort and hope. Peace be with you. 
and then Jesus shows them the scars, the, the scars that mark both of his hands and his side. And when they see that it's Jesus alive and risen from the dead, the disciples rejoice and the disciples believe. Except for Thomas. Because you see, Thomas wasn't there. Thomas doesn't see the scars on the evening of the first day of the week. And since he hasn't seen the scars, Thomas, he's still stuck in the scares. So when the other disciples all say, we have seen the Lord, Thomas is still too scarred by the scares. Yeah, right, he says. Unless I see the scars and touch the scars, I will not believe. And it took about a week, a week of worrying, a week of wondering, a week of waiting. And what a week that must have been. Like a week of waiting for a loved one to heal. Like a week of wondering whether or not you've got the virus. Like a week of worrying about how you're going to pay for the mortgage and the groceries. Whether it's behind a locked door in an upper room or behind a homemade mask in the cereal aisle of Kroger's, or from behind the glow of a computer screen. We too have experienced those weeks. Those weeks of worrying, those weeks of wondering, those weeks of waiting. And sometimes all we can do is wait. One of my favorite Psalms is Psalm 40 because it gets to the heart of the scares and the scars, but it also gets to the hope that is born out of waiting for the promise of God's presence. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the desolate pit out of the miry bog and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. And it took about a week. It took about a week for Jesus to come again. And Jesus appears to Thomas and Jesus says to Thomas, see the scars on my hands, touch the scar on my, sight, on my side, no more doubts and no more scares. It's time to believe. It's time to trust. It's time to live. And Thomas replies, you are my Lord and my God. Then Jesus looks through Thomas, through the disciples, through the ages and peers directly into your scares and your scars. And Jesus says, blessed are you because you have not seen and yet you believe despite the scares and the scars, you believe, you believe that the one who bears the scars of the cross rose from the dead and lives. The one who was crucified, he is alive. But the truth is that on this side of heaven, there will be scares that will scar there will be things in this life that will let us down. Pandemics will let us down. People we love will let us down. Our own bodies will eventually let us down. But the gospel of Jesus Christ will never let you down or let you go. You are a beloved child of God held in the hands of the one who loves you now and forever, and he's got the scars to prove it. As Jesus himself says, sometimes we never get to see it, but blessed are those who believe without seeing. The gift of faith is believing what we don't see and trusting what we can't touch. That's the gift of an Easter faith. 
And I just love how our Bible reading ends this morning. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The one who is crucified now lives and he bears the scars to take away our scares. He is Jesus. He is Jesus. He is our Lord and he is our God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. And we respond to each petition, hear our prayer. Open the doors we close, O oh God, when we fear those who worship you in different ways. Guide us to unity and harmony so that we may come to respect and cherish our commonalities. For our bishops, rostered ministers, synod and lay leaders, we pray for strength, courage, and faith to lead. For our companion synods in Tanzania, Serbia, and Mexico, let us continue in love and support and in the mission to which you have called us together. For our interfaith community, we pray for respect and understanding as together we seek the knowledge of you Alpha and Omega, the author of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the paths we ignore, O oh God, when we prioritize financial gain and convenience over listening to the groaning of the earth. Inspire all to care for the world you have made so that living things might thrive. We are at a crossroads, Lord. We are seeing amazing changes in our world and all creation as we humans take a pause from our busy, frantic lives. Forgive us where we turn away from living the way you created us to live and help us to come out of this pause with new dedication to live in harmony with your creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the rooms we lock, O oh God, to those who live without a place of safety, a home, or a homeland. We pray that generous people and nations offer refuge and peace for all. We pray for our national, state, and local leaders that eyes and ears and hearts may be open to the needs of all people and that your compassion will reign. We pray for the gift of the wisdom of Solomon so that fear may not overcome empathy and action will be balanced for the benefit of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the hearts we close, O oh God, to the cries of those in pain. We pray for everyone across the globe as we live in isolation, a reality that for many of us is much different from that that we're used to. These are hard days when incarceration, addiction, mental illness, chronic suffering, and grief are amplified. And it seems the only way we can communicate is through technology. You, cre you created us in community and many of us crave physical touch and interaction. Send your peace and comfort anew to us now. Calm our hearts and minds that are frantic Allow our electronic connection to enhance relationships in new and amazing ways and reintroduce your people to the power of prayer and shift our dependence on others to you. You are the true source of comfort, connection, and life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the ways of love, O oh God, in the pursuit of peace throughout the world and bless the efforts of missionaries, healthcare professionals, activists for women and children, 
and relief workers, especially those who find themselves in harm's way. For nurses and doctors, police and firefighters, EMT workers, manufacturers, and all essential workers on the front line of the coronavirus fight, we pray for safety, health, and an end to this pandemic. Give our scientists and those who are seeking treatment and vaccinations new insights and concepts for intervention. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open our lips to raise to you all those that we name aloud or in our heart, those who need your presence, those who are sick, grieving, those who need your comfort. We raise them now to you, O oh Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the way to eternal life, O oh God. As we remember those who have died in faith, all those who have gone before us, all those who are transitioning now into your arms of love. Let all of us know that we are surrounded in your love and light. Free us from the fear of death and help us to embrace the peace you have promised. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all of this for which we have prayed in your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we take a moment to ponder our offerings and tithes, I want to encourage you to be generous. Many of us, though not all of us, have received or will soon receive a stimulus check from the IRS. I would like you to prayerfully consider setting aside 10%, a tithe, and to give that tithe to God through your local parish. If your parish offers online giving, you can do that right now. Or you can write a check to your church, put it in an envelope, affix a stamp, and send it out with tomorrow's mail. And if just one of us does that, it will make a difference. But if all of us give 10% to God through our local parish, God will take our combined effort and do amazing things. And if there is one thing I know about Northwestern Ohio, it's that I can count on you to partner with God to do amazing things. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Go in peace. Christ is with you. 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 Christ goes with you. Christ is with you. Christ is with you. Amen. Peace be with you. 
Thanks be to God.